Greetings and welcome to today's little holiday painting lesson. Today, we are specifically going to be painting this little Christmas tree right here. I love Christmas trees, I love painting them. I feel like we put a Christmas tree up every year and it only makes sense that we, we paint one as well. So I hope this helps get you in that holiday spirit. As per usual, if you would like help with the drawing process, there is the digital sketch up over on Patreon to help you with just that. And the full uncut hour-long version is also available over on Patreon as well. And it is actually our 50th hour-long lesson, which I've been working on these for two years now, making this catalog, making all of these, and I'm just, I'm so proud of what we've done here, what we've built together, and the catalog that is up there. And I want to thank you for sticking by me to this big number 50. Also, I'm going to, I'm going to continue rambling for just a second because I did have a little piece of little news, and that is the holiday sale. I'm talking a lot. <laughs> The holiday sale is still on. It is 25% off all of my ebooks, acrylics for beginners, painting prompts, all of that. That's enough rambling though. I'm, I'm done. I'm done the rambles. We're going to get into the painting lesson. Again, if you need any help with the painting, if you have any questions, please let me know. Leave them in the comments. I'm here and I'm happy to help. But now let's jump into today's hour long cut up lesson thing of a holiday Christmas winter tree. I'm terrible at titles, but boy, Boy, are they fun to say. Let's get into it. So I'm going to begin, as I generally do, by taking my large square-headed brush, dipping the tip of it in some water to make sure that it's nice and damp to extend the wet life of my paint and help me drag it a little bit farther. Then I'm going to head over to my palette. I'm going to grab some primary blue. I'm going to grab about an equal mixture of primary red. Now, primary red and primary blue mix to make a purple, but it'll be a little bit blue dominant because blue is a slightly more saturated pigment. So I really like that pigment, but we need to thicken it up. We're going to put this in the sky, and it's going to be our main base layer. So I'm going to take some titanium white because it's a much more thick pigment, and I'm going to grab about a quarter of that in Mars Black to darken it again. That titanium white is going to thicken the paint, but it's also going to brighten it a good deal. And I don't want it to be too, too bright, but I do want it just like that. So that worked really well, and I'm going to begin by applying this up here in the sky. And as you can see, I'm starting to lose a little bit of my drawings. I can see them to a point because I did them with a fine tip Sharpie, and acrylic paints are semi-transparent so I can see through them to a point, but it's okay, we can always go back to the digital sketch or rewind the video. Now, I'm going to head back over to my palette and we're going to make it a little bit brighter as we move down in the painting. And I'm also going to add a hint more red into it as well. This is going to make it slightly warmer and we're going to create some depth here by just changing the color a little bit and starting to work on a gradient here in the painting. Now we're doing a lot of horizontal strokes as you can see. And it would be easy to get a lot of brush strokes working into our canvas, but we don't want that. We want a fairly smooth canvas. We don't want all of these extra impressions in it. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go over all of this with very smooth, soft strokes. The more pressure you add with your brush, the more brush strokes you actually create in your painting. So we have a first little coat layer on there, and while I used a lot of titanium white to thicken it, it isn't entirely thick, it isn't entirely um, th this really nice opaque looking pigment. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to do a second layer over most of it. This time I'm going to start from the bottom and I'm going to work my way upwards. So I'm going to create a bit more paint, a bit more of our mixture, I'm going to grab some titanium white, primary blue, a little bit more than the primary blue and primary red. And I'll grab a hint of Mars black as well because we, we don't want it to be hyper saturated. We don't want it to take away from the tree. So we're just going to saturate it or desaturate it a little bit. Try using this pigment. It's a little bit darker than what I wanted. So I'll add some extra titanium white and maybe a little bit of extra red as well. Acrylic painting is all about problem solving. You try something, you give it a go. If you don't like it, that's okay. You just remix your colors, and then you continue from there. 
I'm going to switch over to my smaller square headed brush. I'm going to dip the tip of it in some water and we're going to work on the tree silhouette in the background. For that I'm going to grab some Mars Black, I'm going to grab a good amount of primary red, good amount of primary blue, a little bit less primary blue than primary red. I'm going to mix together a dark pigment here. But while it's a silhouette, I don't want it to be too close to a black, so I am going to incorporate a little bit of titanium white, brighten it a little bit. There is light on that horizon. And then I'm going to go down to my tree line and I'm going to work all of these little vertical strokes upwards and create the implication of trees in the background. These trees are fairly far away and so they're not going to have a lot of detail in them and it's important that you make them fairly simple to a point otherwise they'll distract from the foreground and you won't have the depth you want. I'm taking little breaks in between some that way I can kind of allocate different spacing and figure out okay if this one's that high then the next one beside it needs to be a little bit shorter and then the next one needs to be higher but we can't make it as high as the last high one we made otherwise it'll look like a pattern. And these are all things to consider when working on your lines of trees. The bottom of our tree line here is now dry, so we're going to begin working on the snow. Now, a lot of us think of snow as white. However, snow is really reflective, and it's going to catch a lot of light from the atmosphere, and the atmosphere is very purple. So, our snow is actually going to be very purple. So, I'm going to take some primary blue, some primary red, and I'm going to mix up a dark snow color first, and then we'll add the highlights on top of it to create some depth. But here, I'm going to mix it right beside our previous dark purple, so I know what I'm working with in relation to the sky color. And I'm going to try to make this just a little bit darker for our base color here. So, just like this, we are trying to add a little bit more Mars Black, make sure that it's nice and dark, but work that balance, add in that titanium white, still make it a nice thick pigment and something that works really well with our purple. There we go. Now with this, I'm going to take the sharp edge of the brush and I'm going to work across this line that I've created with the trees and then I'm going to blend downwards. Now I'm going to switch over to my medium sized square headed brush, dip the tip of that in some water, make sure that it's nice and damp, and we're going to create a lighter bluish purple. And I'm going to do this in my last mixture, that way I have a, a good reference and I can create something that very naturally fits with what we just created. We're creating the highlights for it now, the areas that are going to be catching some light and the non shadowy areas. So here I'm just mixing up a, a new purple. As you can see, it is brighter than the last one. So now I'm going to pick some areas which I feel will have mounds of snow that will be a little bit more highlighted. And I'm going to start by creating a sharp edge as you just saw, and then I'm going to blend it down. I'm going to make it a little bit brighter because our current pigment is mixing with the darker pigment, making it darker on the painting here than what we had on our palette. There we go, that's really nice. Start on the top, and then we blend down. And the goal here is to create a smooth gradient so that we do have that sharp line at the top, and then as we get towards the bottom, it dissipates, it gets softer, and then we just have a nice gradient into the darker purple. Grab a little bit more, We'll also be adding some golden highlights from the lights from the tree, but that isn't happening quite yet. But now it is time to start working on our Christmas tree. I'm going to start on the top of my Christmas tree with a little tap so I get a very small impression. Then I'm going to work my way down. And this is just going to be a little silhouette for this first layer, and then we'll add in all of our detail and colors in a second. But right now we're just getting the shape. I'm starting on the edges. While I have a lot of crisp clean paint, then I'm working my way into the middle of the tree and just filling it in. I'm using the sharp edge of the brush here to work around the snow. And I'm trying to make sure that these sides aren't too similar. 
So, for this next midtone, I want to create something a little bit brighter, and I'm going to take some primary yellow, some primary blue, and mix up a bit of a green. And the atmosphere color is purple, so the majority of the tree should be purple. However, we're going to have lights on the tree, and they're going to reveal the true colors of the tree. It's not just getting light from the sky. So here I'm trying to mix up a nice, fairly mid-tone of a green. So I'm using my primary yellow, primary blue, Mars black, and titanium white. The more Mars black you add, the more warm it will get, and the more primary blue you add, the more cool it will get. And I'm going to essentially take this, and I'm going to apply it towards the ends of my branches. Because under there, the tops of the branches are going to be casting or have shadow casted on them. So this area right here is going to be a little bit darker because it's going to have shadow from the ends of these little branches here. So I'm trying to consider where my branches are and then I add the midtone as you can see at the bottom of them and then I let it dissipate and blend up to the top. Now I'm going to grab my smaller square headed brush to get a little bit more detail. I'm going to take a little bit of extra titanium white, work that into our green. And now at the tips, I'm going to work in a little bit more of our highlight. Not too much, but just a little bit. I'm going to add the snow with my smaller square headed brush because it's so detail oriented and I'm going to mix up a light purple for it. And this is going to be the lightest of all of the purples that I've made because it's going to have the reflected light from the atmosphere and the light that's going to be given off from the tree itself. So I'm mixing this next to the lightest purple that I've created thus far. I'm going to give it a hint more primary red, just using the corner of the brush to grab that. And then I'm going to start at the top just with a little bit of a tapping motion. And then I'm going to work it down towards the bottom. And I'm going to follow portions of the edge with this tap and I'm going to move it upwards yet again. This way it looks like the snow is kind of falling and landing on it. And for the most part it's going to be on the tips because much like the tops of the branches having shadow, they're also going to be protected from snow from the above branches. So it's important that we continuously consider what parts of the branches are receiving light and what parts of the branches are receiving snow. We'll build up a lot more snow at the bottom than we did the top, just because the branches are so much larger, they can carry so much more. There we go, kind of connecting little tapped areas, putting them together. This area is a little barren, so I'm just going to throw a little bit in there. I'm going to take a very small round-headed brush, and this is going to be great for the lights because it'll create nice soft edges. It doesn't have a hard edge like the square-headed brush, but I'm going to start by making it nice and damp, as we always do. I'm going to create a little bit of an orange by taking some primary red, and about three times that in primary yellow because primary red is a much stronger pigment and if you add about half and half you're not going to get an orange you're going to get red with a, a hint of yellow or a hint of orange in it and then I'm going to grab some titanium white to thicken it up and create a nice bright pigment here just like that it's very small and then I'm going to start applying some lights to my tree. And I'm going to do this in strands, moving down in this shape. And it can kind of help to make this shape in the air before you do it. Just give yourself a good familiarizing motion. Now I'm going to take a little bit more and I'm going to go back over those same applications that I made because again acrylics are transparent and we're working a light layer over a dark layer and generally that dark layer will show through that light layer. Also the harder you push 
the more you will move paint out around your brush and the more transparent the middle portion will be. So when we're applying a lot of pigment like this, we're eventually going to run out of paint on our brush and we're going to push harder and harder to get that paint into the canvas. But in the process of doing that, we're going to create thinner and thinner applications. But now we're going to brighten it. We're going to add a bit of a highlight layer to it. So I'm going to take some primary yellow and some titanium white. I'm going to mix those two together. It's going to make a much brighter pigment. And this is the pigment we really want to use. But we started with the slightly darker pigment because if we applied this yellow over the green, it would create more of a blue and we just wouldn't have a nice highlight. So here I'm going to go in and I'm going to start by applying this to every other light just to give it a bit of diversity, make it a little bit more interesting. I'm going to head over to my palette and I'm going to mix up another orange. I'm going to do it next to my first orange so I get something nice and similar, just like this. And then I'll grab some titanium white to make it a little bit more thick and stand out. And just like that, we have what we want. But now I'm going to really thin it out. So I'm going to grab a lot of water. That way the pigment is fairly transparent. I'm going to head over to a light and then I'm going to apply this very watery mixture around it. And I'm going to blend it out into the atmosphere. I'm going to use my finger occasionally to do so. But as you can see, because it's so watered down, it creates just this little aura of orange, of yellow, of red. And I want to make it as dense as I can, as close to the light as I can, and then as I move outward from the light, it gets lesser and lesser, and it gets more subtle. Now we're going to go back, we're going to make it a little bit brighter, so I'm going to add a, a hint more titanium white to our mixture, and I'm going to grab some more water, make it nice and thin, then I'm going to go back and I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm just working my way around, down my tree, and every time we do this, we make portions of the tree so much brighter. But now we're going to take some of that glow, so some of that orange that we have, and we're going to throw it down into the bottom snow area here, because it is going to reflect down there. And we're going to start with the orange and some of these highlighted areas. We're going to make a little bit more of a yellow mixture and apply that on top. And I didn't start with this because I wanted to build up that warm highlight and I didn't want it to blend too much with the blue in the snow and create something that was going to look more green. Now there's a, a pink light right there and right there so I'm going to add a little bit of pink highlight into the snow as well. I'm going to make it fairly bright using a good amount of titanium white there. just working that down into the rest of these beautiful highlights. I'm going to switch over to my medium sized square headed brush because it can carry a good amount of paint but it's still fairly detail oriented. It still has those nice sharp edges to it. So I'm going to dip my square headed brush into the water. I'm going to head over to my palette. I'm going to grab some primary blue. I'm going to grab some primary red. We're going to mix up a bit of a nice darker purple as we have a hundred times in this painting. Got a little bit of Mars black, a little bit of titanium white, and there you can see it's fairly close to a dark purple which we've achieved before. And now I'm going to kind of follow the edges here and create the base layer for this little ice cave we have in the foreground. I'm going to take my new lighter purple, as you can see, and I'm going to work it around my edges, the areas that are going to be receiving the most amount of light, and the light's coming in, so it is going to be the edges. And then I'm going to create some blends, and I'm going to create some extra little mounds of snow as well, and blend it down into the rest. I'm going to take 
my smaller square hooded brush, dip the tip of it in some water. We're going to grab and mix some brighter purple for the icicles on the top. And I'm going to use the brighter purple that we used for the snow just a second ago as my reference. Just going to add a little bit more red in there. And then if I can see the bottom of it, I'm going to work from that upwards. But if I can't, I may work from the top, the areas that I can still see in the drawing downwards and kind of make it up as I go. Both of which are legitimate ways of approaching it. Just make sure that the edges are nice and sharp. But I'm starting to blend my icicles up into that darker pigment that we have up here. It started to dry, but that's okay. I'm working in a wet into dry effect. So I'm just using a lot of water to kind of blend this on top of the darker pigment. Now I'm going to take some titanium white, mix that into the previous highlighted purple we had, and we're going to start defining some of our icicles. And I'm doing that by applying this light to the edge, just using the corner of my brush at this point, because it's going to give me the smallest impression on the canvas. I'm using a very watered down mixture here, because it's going to be nice and thin, and in different areas it's going to be slightly more pronounced. So it's going to make it look like some of the ice has more of a highlight than other portions. Starting to get that magic in the painting. So here we'll head back, we'll grab some more. Start on our edge, work our way down. Start on our other edge, work our way down. Add a little bit of impressions into it. Start a new one. Make it a different size. Now I'm going to take some extra titanium white and I'm going to take a little bit of primary blue, create a nice bright blue. And I'm going to incorporate hints of this into these as well. This is really going to define them because before we were working purple on purple on purple. And while blue is a very close color, it is different. And it will stand out to a point. Anyways, there we have it. That is today's hour long cut up lesson thing. As per usual, I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you feel like you've learned something. If you'd like to learn more, there is a link in the description to my Patreon where you can find the full uncut hour long version of this lesson along with the digital sketch to help you with that drawing process. You can also find over 50 other hour long lessons there as well as reference photos and one on one video critiques as well. So if you're interested in any of that, go check it out. It's also just a great way to help support the channel. I'd also like to note that if you are new to acrylic painting, if you're just trying to learn everything you can as fast as you can, you can also find my ebook Acrylics for Beginners in the description as well. In it, we talk about everything you need to know before you jump into your first acrylic painting. We talk about what brushes to use, how to blend your paints, how to work with water, how to ensure that your paint stays wet longer so that you can blend with it longer so that you get to tackle those really tricky areas. So all of that, again, link in the description. You can also find my ebooks, Painting Prompts 1 and Painting Prompts 2. These are great for people who find that they have artist block frequently. They are essentially two ebooks with 21 digital sketches in them for days where you want to create something, you want to make something, you want to get better at the craft of painting, but you just, you don't know what to paint, you don't have any ideas. With these, you just pick an image, you transfer it to canvas using the grid lines or other means, and then from there, you just start painting. So it really speeds up the process and it ensures that you paint so much more frequently and just get better at the craft. So if you're interested in any of that, there are the links in the description down below. I post twice a week, every week, so hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button. And I'd like to end this video on one very important note. And that is, while acrylic paints are incredibly fun to work with, while they can be very relaxing, 
Sometimes they can also be a little bit complicated. So if you have any questions at all, please leave me a comment in the comments down below. I am here, I am happy to help, and I'm happy to have that conversation with you and just make your paintings as good as they can be. So with that said, I will see you very soon with a new acrylic lesson. Thank you so much for stopping by. And above all, as always, stay creative.